All right, welcome to part three of our Power Automate approval series. We're going to talk about uh, approval types and assignment and sort of how they play off one another and what you need to know if you want to you know, use approvals in some creative ways. Uh, so first off, when you go into and create an approval, we looked at this a little bit in the last uh, video, but the first thing you need to choose in the approval is the approval type. And basically the breakdown of the choices here, the, the values that you can select is the first part of it represents the choices that the user has in the approval message. And then the second part is the completion criteria or, or what determines when the approval is complete. Uh, for simplicity's sake, for right now, we're gonna just go with the standard approve and reject options. Uh, we'll talk about custom responses in another video down the road. Uh, but for right now, let's just say we're, we're going to go with approve and reject just to keep the conversation focused on uh, the important things, which is really m more so the completion criteria and the assignment piece of it. Um, in terms of assignment scenarios, sort of how approvals are typically assigned, there are really three patterns that are most common and, and kind of all of the different approvals that you'll see fall into one of these three and, and really if you'll break it down there's really only two uh, where you're assigning an approval to a single person uh, or you're assigning an approval to multiple people. Now sometimes in almost uh, every situation when people want an approval they'll say well it needs to be approved by three people well how are those you need to kind of take a step back and think how are those approvers responses related to one another is there one person uh, or are they all equal can any one of those three people give the you know say approve or reject uh, do they need to be done in a particular order do, is there a hierarchy to it uh, does it need to be sequential as in person, you know, if person one or person A approves it, then it can go to person B, but if person one rejects it, then it's done. Uh, these are the kind of things you need to think about. So rather than just saying, well, we have a single approval with multiple approvers or we have a, you know, a tiered approval or sequential approval, you really need to define and, and break down the situation, break down the steps to decide and, and to find out from the person who's asking for it what they exactly, how they want that to actually happen. Uh, so in other words, who needs to, you know, whose choice uh, is kind of the binding one and if there is one or if it just needs to be unanimous. Um, now the third option here is sort of a hybrid of the first two where you're going to if you have multiple users, you're going to sign a copy. So each essentially it's like the first scenario where it's a single approval going to a single user, but you're you might have five approval, five approvers rather. So you're assigning five copies of that approval to each person individually. And that'll make more sense when we look at that in just a couple of minutes. So first off, the single approval, single approver scenario is really the simplest use case and that's what you know sometimes that's the most basic thing and that's what you need where you just want to say when user A submits a leave request their manager who's user B needs to approve or reject that that's it so it's very simple in fact I'm not even going to show a demo of this if you go to the previous video where we talked about the different approval actions that's basically what we were doing there was a single approval that went to a single approver and their decision was it um, now in reality when you're doing something like a sequential approval or a hierarchical approval um, very often you're going to chain together multiple instances of these one-to-one -one approvals and that's fine but you do need to factor in that each one of the approvals, uh, or, or I should say all of the approvals, need to be completed within the 30-day time limit for the flow to complete. In other words, sometimes people say, oh, there's a 30-day time limit for an, for flow. Well, they'll say, oh, if we have three approvals, so it's 30 days for each of the approvals. No, if they're all in the same flow, 
all three need to complete within 30 days. So again, that's not a reason not to do it that way, but it's a, it's a factor in how you build your flow. You might want to, you know, build in some reminders, build in some other, some way of, of kind of picking that up later if it does time out. So there are ways to do that. I'm not going to get into any of that in, in at least I don't think I will in my videos. Um, but there are some other videos out there on state machine approvals, which is really what you want for a lot of those kind of, you know, to build some redundancy and some, some durability into a multi-tiered approval process. But that's all we're going to say about the single approval and single user for right now. Now, I want to spend a little more time talking about the multiple approval scenario, or multiple approver scenarios, because that's, I think, where more people get hung up. Um, in other words, if it's one-to-one, -one, it's easy. But when you start factoring in multiple approvers, then things can get complicated. So the way people tend to start doing this, or, or you know, the first time they do it, they're like, okay, I'll just throw all of the approvers into the assign to field. So you sort of have one person putting in approval or putting in a, a request, whatever it is, and that is generating one approver that is addressed to all of the parties involved or assigned to all of the parties involved. Uh, and what actually happens there? Well, first off, once the approval process starts, Assuming notification has not been disabled, it sends the note, sends that email to everyone at the same time. Now, depending on which uh, completion condition you chose, if you selected everyone must approve, then it's going to sit and wait for, you know, if the first person gets it, if there are four approvers, the first person gets it and says approve, then it's going to wait for each of them to weigh in. Um, but... The, the, the catch is that once any of them select reject, that's it, even if the others haven't voted yet or haven't haven't had their say. So it is important to understand that fact that if if you assign it to four people and the first person who sees it clicks reject, that's it. It's over. The, the, the approval is done as far as Power Automate is concerned because one person didn't approve it, so therefore not everyone would approve or, or could have approved. The other option, the first to respond, is pretty similar, uh, except that it's going to complete when the first response comes in, whether that is response is approve or reject. So if the first person says they reject it then or approve it, then that's it. It doesn't wait for the other three to have their say. And once it completes, the message is going to update for all of the parties so that basically everyone sees that it's been completed. So let's just take a quick look at an example of that. So I've got a flow here already set up <clears throat> uh, called one approval, multiple approvers. And if we go to the edit view for this, we'll see how it's set up. So in my, uh, it's just a manually triggered flow where I have a choice uh, on the, the flow launch panel for department. And what this is going to do is uh, three departments are management, operations, and research. And I have a SharePoint list with called departments where the three items in that list are management, operations, and research. And inside there, there is a column called approvers. So what I'm doing inside this scope here is that I'm getting the, you know, basically getting the items from that list that match the choice. So where the title of the item is equal to the department selected in the trigger uh, from that input, uh, the trigger input there. And then I'm using a compose action and a select action and join action to basically get the approvers assigned to that particular department. So I'm not going to go into the de details of this. I've got other videos talking about kind of how to deal with these multi-person, um, multi-value person fields in SharePoint. So take a look at those videos. I'll link them in the description on how to handle that. But basically what we're doing, is, what we end up with is a semicolon separated string of the approvers for each department or for the selected department, I should say. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to get the approvers for that department. And then I have two parallel branches here. 
one where we've selected everyone must approve and the other where we've selected first to respond and again in the assign to we're assigning it to the output of that join action so where we're joining the approvers so what we're feeding in here is email address semicolon email address and as many approvers as I, as I have there it's just going to separate each with an with a semicolon so that's pretty simple all right so if we go back and I run this flow and click run and I'll select management and what do we need approving so I'll say sick day tomorrow and click run flow and done and if we take a look here in our flow we'll see that it has gotten the approvals gotten the approvers if we look at the joint approver emails there are the two approver emails and there is the string the semicolon separated string of email addresses that I'm assigning the approvers approvals to uh, and if I jump over to my email here Uh, now I'm signed in as me, as Chad, and I see that I have, there's my one approval, multiple approvers, everyone must approve, and then there's the first to respond. So for the everyone must approve, I'm going to select reject and submit that. So I have basically, I'm shortcutting this, so if I check back on my history, or the, the run, flow run uh, we'll see that that is complete now the other party Robert didn't even respond because this was because the first person to respond rejected it that's it the approval is done it's met its completion condition now if I jump over to Robert's email and I go to that everyone must approve we'll see hey others have already completed this request so I don't even get to have a say in it um, so that that's just an important factor to consider when using that everyone must approve choice now if I take a look at the first to respond clearly based on what I've already described we know that the first response to this is going to win so if I as the first person to respond say that I approve this and submit it and we jump back over to our flow and we should see momentarily that is complete and if we look at the outputs of that we'll see that the approver was Robert Hogan and the outcome was approved and in fact if we go back to my email and look at that first response others have already completed it so that in there therein kind of lies the the hitch uh, the the speed bump that people run into when they're assigning an approval to multiple people is that inevitably that's not what they really want they want all of the people that they're assigning the the the, the approval to to have a say in it uh, regardless of what it is I mean I think the most recent one I worked on was basically a, a candidate hiring um, process where they were going to to say this you know send this candidate to the committee and the committee is basically saying yes or no to this but they want everybody to have a voice to say you know to put in their yes or no with their comments and then once they have that information as a group they would make a decision so it's not going to be this automated process of yes or no it's going to be let's get feedback more more so than just everyone make a decision or make a choice uh, so how can we accomplish that and that's where that hybrid model comes in so where the standard is that we have a single approval going to multiple people the hybrid is basically splitting it up so that rather than that single approval going to all four people you're generating a separate approval object that's sent to each person individually uh, now this doesn't sound like it's that much different but it really is um, and it's it's just something you have to kind of see to understand so I set up another flow here 
Go back to my flows screen. And in this flow, I've called it one approval, multiple individual approvers. Now, looking at the kind of the, the, the logistics of this, it, again, it's going to sign an individual copy of that approval. So each of them is going to see the same exact message, the same content. Um, you could customize if you wanted to like address it to that particular person. There are ways to do that. I'm not going to get into that here today. But generally speaking, the the choices, the details, etc., the, the 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 heart of the approval, the message is the same. Uh, but what this gets you is that you can you have more flexibility in handling those responses. It does require the use of an apply to each loop because basically what we're going to do is say for each of those approvers generate an approval. Uh, you do really need to think through the the completion condition and also one of the properties of an apply to each loop which we'll take a look at in a moment. Um, but this is generally useful for those scenarios where you want to consider all of the dis the different responses before a decision is made. So if you think of the kind of the, the classic collecting feedback scenario or candidate you know selection of a candidate, uh, whether it's an onboarding hiring choice or voting on something. Um, so you want to have basically let each person have their say rather than just automating it to the point that well, one person rejected it, so that's it. It's done. Uh, one person said no to this candidate, so that candidate is out. That's very, very rarely is that the case. Um, but jumping back over to our flow itself, let's just run, uh, take a look at how this is built a little differently. Uh, so the first thing is, the main difference is that I, in each of these branches, I have an apply to each loop. And we'll see by hovering over the output there that the that this apply to each is running for each item in that select approver emails because in the scope we're getting the department approvers and then selecting the emails which is giving us an array of email addresses this join action is just taking that array and joining the values of it with semicolons but if we use this approver emails array we don't actually have to use an array variable because the, the data itself is in an array format. So we just add and apply to each, tell it to use the output of that select approver emails action. And then in the start and wait for an approval action, we are assigning it to the current item because when this runs, it's going to basically run each of the items in that array is an email address, so it's going to assign it to the first one, then it's going to generate another one to assign to the next person. Or is it? That's that's the question. So let, let's see what happens when we run this flow. So let me go back to the details screen and run this. And I'm going to select management again. And let's say I need a vacation day Friday. Run flow click done so we'll see this is running and if I go in and look now one of the downsides of apply to each loops is that you can't really see what's happening inside of there until it's done <laughs> um, or at least using the starting way for an approval action if we had used create an approval then we'd be able to see that it created an individual approval uh, but if I go over to my email now those are the two from earlier let me just get rid of those to declutter but if I refresh now I'm one of the approvers I haven't gotten the message yet if I can refresh all I want um, because the reality is that when I look at the approvers here or the the emails uh, I'm f the first one there is Robert Hogan so when I go and check his mailbox and again let me clean up those old messages. We'll see there are the two uh, approval messages. So why did he get them but not me? Well, the reason for that is that by default, apply to each loops run 
single threaded. So basically it's going to send it to the, the first person in that array and wait for their response. And then it's going to send it to the next person and wait for their response. Now there's a way around that, which we'll show in just a minute, but basically in order for Chad to see, you know, be given the option to make this his choice, Robert first needs to do what he needs to do. So let's say Robert is going to give this the approve. Now it's important to note that because this is now a single approval being assigned to a single person, it's just running in that apply to each loop. It again doesn't matter whether you, the, you use the first to respond or everyone must approve. Uh, so I'm going to say that he approves of that and let's say that I reject for the everyone must approve so we'll reject that and I can see approved and rejected and now if I jump back over to Chad's email hey there is the first to respond but somebody already responded to that Robert already already responded but again remember we're not this isn't a scenario where the same approval is being sent it's a separate approval for the same thing so that's the important part here uh, so now I can say uh, I want to let me just remember how for the first to respond here I selected approved so I'm gonna select reject here and then for the everyone must prove I rejected that so I'm gonna select approve here so that is going to be the end of so we can see now that the flow ran successfully but you'll see that in this apply to each loop we're looking at the first iteration of the loop that went to Robert and he rejected it and then the next went to Chad and he approved it likewise in the first to respond branch first one went to Robert he approved it second one went to Chad and he rejected it now again the the advantage here is that it didn't the the approval process didn't stop after the first person took action um, so again for those cases where you want every person to weigh in this is really a better way to do it uh, now to to get back to the the issue of the why didn't Chad get the email until or get the approval message until Robert had taken action? Well, that comes back to parallelism. So let me edit the flow here. And the apply to each loop. If you go into the settings for an apply to each loop, there is a, uh, a property of it called concurrency control. Uh, so by default, for each loops ex execute sequentially by default, um, meaning that it runs once and it waits for that first iteration to complete before it runs the second iteration. Uh, so for this, in this scenario, that's kind of biting us because we don't want, we want that approval to be created for each of the approvers at the same time. So what we can do is turn on concurrency and then the degree of parallelism is basically the number of threads, the number of parallel processes that you're going to allow. Uh, it defaults to 20. Um, you can increase that to up to 50. So if you had 50 approvers, you could bump this up to 50 and then it would generate all 50 of those approvals simultaneously. Uh, but since I only, you know, let's say I'm, I know I'm never going to have more than 10, I'm just going to set that to 10. Uh, and again, it's a little bit of a performance hit. The higher that number is, the, the greater number of approvers it will accommodate, but it then consumes a bit more in terms of resources in Power Automate. So best to minimize that when you can. Uh, so I'm going to do that on the other branch as well. So we'll turn that on and set it to 10. Done. And I'll hit save. And then I'll go and run this again with the 
apply to each is running in parallel. So let's run this. And in this case, I am again sending it to management and I'm gonna say I need next Tuesday off for vacation. And I'll run that. Let me just clean up there. And we can see now that Chad got the everyone must approve and the first to respond. And if I jump over and we look at Robert's email, we'll see that he also got those. So that worked. So now we are basically generating each of those approvals simultaneously. So um, we still have the same situation where each individual approval is, is a one-to-one, -one, but the difference is that we can then, after the fact, account for, you know, factor in each of the responses so we don't have one person short-circuiting the process. So again, uh, Chad will select for first to respond, he'll approve it, and everyone must approve. He'll reject that. If I jump over to Chad's for first to respond, he'll reject that. And then everyone must approve. He'll approve that. And when we look at our flow, we'll see that is complete. And there we go. So we can see that it generated each of those flows at the same moment in time. In fact, if we look at the request date, that's going to be when the flow is actually generated. It's going to be at the same second for each of them. Um, but as I said, the, the beauty of this is that we, we don't, each person still has the ability to have their response and you can then collect those responses in some way. So you can uh, for example, if it were a voting scenario, you might have two variables like var yes, var no, and for each response that is approve or yes, you increment that yes variable to count the number of yeses or count the number of no's, and then based on that, you can do something else. So we'll get into that in a future scenario-based video um, where we do sort of a, a voting type layout, um, but that is oh, sorry uh, that is the hybrid model so again a number of different cases where that's useful but it's it's really kind of fundamentally important to understand the difference between that one approval going to multiple people versus multiple approvals or, or the same approval copies of the same approval going to multiple people um, so there you go so that's it for today. This was a little longer than I expected, but uh, the next video I'm working on is going to talk about um, kind of the, the other fields that we have in the approval there. So things like um, the approval details, how we can add links to the item being approved if relevant, and also some little bit about attachments. I'm not going to go too deep into that. Uh, but basically we'll talk through the, the other things, uh, the other fields that you can fill in there. Uh, and then the video after that, we'll kind of wrap things up by talking about those completion conditions. Uh, and we'll look at a couple of different scenarios. So check back for those other videos later. Thanks and have a great day.